Uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody. This is Wiedo Ullemans, your lecturer. At least your lecturer and your coordinator for uh, the HPM part of the research methods course. So, <clears throat> I was thinking today uh, about how to best convey uh, knowledge on how to perform uh, structural equation modeling analysis, basic analysis I want you to learn for group assignment two, and also to explain a little bit how the program works. So, um, I thought it would be nice to uh, make some video lectures on it, so that you can actually see what kind of buttons I click and get a better feeling for the programs, right? So, I hope this will help you. And here I opened the SEM uh, underscore practice file we are going to use in SPSS, just to give you an idea of what we are going to analyze. So we have a questionnaire, a highly structured questionnaire, that has been filled out by 636 employees. So we have information on all kinds of stuff, gender, the age of the employees, contract hours, team tenure, organizational tenure, and here the list goes on. We ask them all kinds of specific questions. Now, <clears throat> what is interesting, or what I want you to focus on for now, is uh, social support. So, as, bit, uh, as I already told you in the introduction le uh, lecture, we have 12 items that um, are uh, actually observed variables. So, we asked people to fill out 12 questions on support. But they vary slightly, because here you see there are four questions on social support. S sub 1 through S sub 4. So, okay. And then if you look uh, further, then you see we have four um, items, questions, that relate to instrumental support. So if needed, my colleagues help me to perform specific tasks, to take over certain work tasks, to give me advice on how to handle my work, and to voice their opinions about tackling particular problems. So this is also support, but more instrumental to the, task, the tasks people have performed. And then finally, we have four questions on uh, team leader support, or at, uh, to be more specific, team leader social support. So my team leader is attentive to my problems. My team leader shows his or her appreciation of me. Uh, team leader is proud of the work I do, and the team leader gives me positive feedback on the way I fulfill my duties. So now you can see that each of these 12 items, each of these 12 questions are answered on a five point scale ranging from one, almost never, to five, almost always. So uh, employees filled out the degree to which they, uh, uh, they received social support on a scale from one to five. Now, what we want to do now is actually to see if this three-factor structure of support um, can actually be identified and lead to a good model fit. Um, so let's go here. So uh, oh yeah, you can start the, the AMOS program by clicking on the AMOS graphics button. Then you come here uh, into the screen and then uh, the first thing you do is you want to select the file you're working on. So you can so you click on here, you click on file name and the, the, the thing, lectures, you have SEM underscore practice. So now the variables are actually uploaded into the SPSS AMOS program. Uh, what I always do is interface properties. I make some adjustments on the layout. So we have here a landscape, right? Because I it's just my per personal preference. Um, then, uh, if you want to conduct confirmatory factor analysis, th this button comes in handy. So remember, the circles are the latent variables, and the, the uh, squares, they are actually the observed variables. So we expect actually uh, one latent construct to be estimated by four observed variables, which each have their own error term. And latent, one factor loading is always constrained to one in order to uh, be able to calculate the other factor loadings, right? So now I will show you some tricks. Select all objects here, and you can use this ancient copy machine to copy this structure 
two times. And here again, if you click on the resize button, you see that we have a nice overview of the 12 uh, indicators. Uh, we click on the this to deselect and now we click on list of variable names and what I'm going to do is just I'm going to drag in each of these items into the observed boxes so we have here four items for social support received from colleagues S sub 1, S sub 2, S sub 3 and S sub 4 and this looks again a bit messy so if you go to view interface properties uh, miscellaneous then you actually can unclick the display variable names or display variable labels because it it actually shows the questions itself and i all, only want the item names okay so let's move on i sub one i sub two I sub 3 and I sub 4 and we have the final latent factor we observe team leader support question 1 team leader support question 2 3 and 4 so you can either drag these items or you can also double click on the box and then you just you can also type in the variable name but may, do, uh, be sure to do uh, to not make any mistakes but because if you make a mistake then uh, SPSS AMOS will not recognize the variable now we have to name the latent variables so you double click on the circles and you for instance this is social support right or maybe social social support Support colleagues received from colleagues, right? And you have instrumental support for received from colleagues, and you have team leader support or team leader social support. Okay, now the some final steps are necessary. First of all, we expect these uh, to be independent of our uh, these latent variables. Uh, to have three different factors, but you, we also expect them to co-vary. Um, why? Yeah, that's a little bit of a theoretical issue, but you would say that they all measure some kind of social support, so they will still uh, share some of the variance, right? So, oh, actually, I'm um, done doing now. <clears throat> actually, what you can use is this magic magic stuff want to make your picture a bit prettier it's not so um, important but if you want to copy and paste uh, your figure in some kind of word document or uh, when you're writing a scientific article you want this to look nice right now the final thing to do is to name all of the error terms that are associated with the observed variable so you go to plugin name of unobserved variable names and here you have it um, now you're ready to to run this model actually and you can click on this button analysis properties and ask for specific output so you want factor score weights particularly because we are conducting factor analysis <laughs> modification indices i would say 20 uh, why I do that is actually um, I only want to see modification indices which improve or actually reduce my chi-square um, by at least 20 points because otherwise Amos will show you a lot of minor incremental changes you can make to your model which do not really improve your model fit but there's not a rule of thumb for this. I just do that because I uh, like big changes. <laughs> okay, so now in the end, one more trick. If you click on title and you press click on title and you click here on your sheet, then you can actually ask for the C min 
that's actually the chi square backslash gmail. We can ask for the degrees of freedom of chi square. It's backslash ef. You can ask for the p value. This is slash p. Let's focus on the GFI I explained to you last yesterday. GFI. Let's ask for the. Uh, it was the CFI. 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 Backslash CFI. And RMSEA is backslash RMSEA. And remember, these are all fit indices that uh, can tell you whether or not your data fits to the, your proposed theoretical model, in this case, this, this three factor structure, the latent factor structure, actually fits to the empirical data that you have collected, right? Let me click here again. Now we're ready. So we are going to press the run button. So here we go. And ask you to save the file. So three factor CFA support. Did that before. And then it runs. Now you will see here that this arrow pointing upwards is red, which means that. Um, Amos was uh, able to identify your model. And here you can choose to look at the scale dependent and standardized estimates or the scale in, uh, independent standardized estimates, right? So, what do we see? Well, first of all, you can look at the factor loadings. And generally, you would say that a factor loading of bo above 0.5 uh, shows a uh, shows that it is a pretty good indicator for the latent variable you you expected to observe, right? So these loading, uh, the loadings look uh, pretty good actually. And you see also here this is the standardized coefficient. So you see that uh, these latent constructs they indeed are associated with one another to a degree. So they share some of the uh, variance, right? Um, and then last but certainly not least, because this would be the most important part where you look at your model fit, and you see that um, the chi-square is uh, 484, degrees of freedom 51, and the p-value is uh, significant, 0 0.000 actually. <laughs> and um, yeah, so, if you look at uh, this fit, in this, uh, fit indicator, then you would say that you want a chi-square that is as low as possible. Preferably, you want p-value that is below uh, 0 0.05. So p-value that is not significant, which means that your theoretical model uh, actually fits the empirical data. However, it's very difficult to achieve a p-value or an insignificant p-value uh, when you have data sets that are uh, that contain uh, like 400 observations or more. So if, if you have a data set with four, five, or 600 people or more in it, or teams or organizations, then uh, the p-value would almost always be significant. So we can also look at other no, but by the way, the chi-square, you want to ha have a, a chi-square that is as low as possible, right? So the GFI and the CFI are uh, other two indicators which should, uh, according to the rule of thumb, uh, be above 0.90 uh, for your model fit to be good. So you see here GFI, ah, not entirely, 0.88. CFI is above 0.90, which is an indicator of good model fit. Then we have the RMSEA, uh, which uh, should be lower than 0 0.08. But you see here, it's a bit on the high side. It's too high, according to these uh, criteria, at least. So what we want to do is to look at the model fit indices. And you will find them by clicking on the view text. You will also find all outputs you need. Uh, but let's focus on the modification indices for now. 
and it shows you two things it shows you the covariances and the regression weights uh, or suggestions for improvements in the covariance uh, structure and the regression weight structure um, first of all i would never make um, improvements in the regression structure why not now for instance it will it it suggests here that my chi-square will reduce by 45 points if I predict that social support, the first question we have asked about social support uh, would cause um, would cause uh, uh, an, uh, what's the team leader support for first item to be increased and actually I in my theoretical model, I propose that we have different kind of latent variables, one for social support received from colleagues and one from um, the team leader. So I don't want the one necessarily, at least also not on an observed level, I don't want one item to predict the other. So when we look at the covariances, we ha also have to think whether or not these kind of uh, improvements make sense. So you see here the biggest improvement we can make is correlate the error term of the question seven with the error term of question eight. So meaning that, yeah, the error terms of question seven and question eight, they would share some of the variance. When we go back to the model. Oh, you can actually see that, so, seven and eight go back to the right model um, you can see that these two errors actually relate to the same underlying uh, latent uh, factor we proposed so you could argue that errors associated with observed indicators for the same latent factor indeed go vary Okay, but this is something you would need to explain in, a a the uh, in theory because uh, you did not propose it and you did not expect to find this, right? So, okay, let's run the model again. And now we can press the red square. And now we see RMSEA has improved and the GFI. So the GFI is now above point 0.90. But the RMSEA is still a bit on the high side. It's higher than 0 0.08. So we can look again at the modification indices. Oh, the modification indices. And then it suggests, let's see. Yeah. I would say that E9 co varies with E10, that could make sense because they are also loading on the same latent factor. And E1 co varies with E2 also could make sense because these error terms load on the same factor. So let's do two more improvements. Ah, is it? Okay. And we have to click on the gray button that uh, arrow to make these adjustments and let's click 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 so let's do a final run of the model and now we see okay that when we take into account that three of at least that there are three covariances in the error term, then we have a GFI and a CFI that is above 0.90 and an RMSEA that is below 0.08. So, and here you have it. This is, um, we discussed, I think, how to set up latent variables. We discussed how latent variables are related to observed variables and they each have their error term. Yeah, you can use your data set to drag the observed variables into the confirmatory factor analysis 
and we have talked about how to look at the, what, how to interpret the output and how to use the modification indices table. So that's it. I hope this helps you to uh, perform a confirmatory factor analysis in AMOS.